All right, we're going to continue where we left off with the last animation file format stream. Um, this time, I think the next step is to load the file format that we made last time. But before we do that, I want to clean up some stuff. So, you know, we kept doing this kind of thing to just like append a struct in binary. And whoops, and that's this is sort of a large, cumbersome expression, and it's a little bit error prone. So you know, I kept saying, hey, I feel like I should have a function for this, but I don't know where it is. I'm just going to make a new one. I'm going to put it officially in the string builder so that the people who are in the beta can use it. It's just really simple. We're going to go, um, we're going to go append struct, right? Um, you know, builder is a pointer to a string builder, right? And, um, Pointer is a pointer to a dollar sign T. And maybe we don't even call it append struct. Um, append. Uh, see, I don't want to just overload the word append because we have one that takes this and a length, although maybe that's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment with this and we might not like it. Okay, so this is literally just gonna be append to the builder, um, cast the pointer, which we wouldn't have to do if it was a void pointer, but we do. Um, and then size of T, right? This is literally, literally what it is. And this is, uh, this is nicer. It's like less text than this. And you automatically get the correspondence between these two expressions and all that. So um, now the question is, do we have some other append overload that this is going to conflict with? I hope not. We'll find out. Um, anyway, so we're going to do this, right? Let's just try that out and then we'll do the other ones. Much cleaner. In fact, so much cleaner. Let's just do that. And since, okay, since we only need to use the word state once, just like do that. That's a lot. Doesn't this, you know, this is basically the same as this. Look how much shrimpier it got. All right. Does that compile? Nope. It doesn't match any of the append inline. Okay, wait. Wanted three. What? Hold on. Straw oh, string builder 94, string builder, string builder, sample animation. Oh, I didn't say pointer to builder. That's all. Okay, great. So let's do these for this and um, for that. <clears throat> and then here Um, yeah, we just got to change this. My mind was wandering for a second. Okay, so position, orientation, scale. Great. Much cleaner. And then we'll deliver this to the people. The question is, what if somebody, what if somebody actually tries to append a pointer and then gets sad that it didn't work? 
like I feel like it's bad. I feel like this is a bad name for this. Also, we could make a version that operates by value here. And then we would probably, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyway, I don't want to rat hole on programming language stuff because this stream is about, um, Yeah, I don't want just want to say append. I want to say like append. Um, append whatever we're pointing at, but that's way too long of a name. And if I say append pointer, that. Um, um, implies that we're actually putting the pointer in. So append the dereferenced value of whatever we are pointing, append by pointer. Let's call it, yeah, let's, let's do that. That's going to make these look a little bit longer down here, but that's fine. It's just a function name. Um, it's just, I, I don't like abusing overloading too much. Because I think it does call, cause confusion. All right. We're going to put this here. Append, append, append. See, these were actually appending the argument. And um, yeah, OK. I think that's good. Because also, you could have some polymorphic function where you get some parameter of type t and you append whatever that is. Um, but then you sometime pass it a pointer and it changes the meaning of the thing when you really wanted that to be an error, right? So yeah, okay, good, good on us. And we'll tell the people about this even. We'll say, um, added module string builder dot append by pointer, pointer a convenience function for appending structs or whatever else. Okay. So it's literally just that, not chapend. Okay, let's get back to the actual file format stuff. Um, we are now doing these. It's slightly cleaner. Um, I also wanted to add something because I think we're going to want to do compression later. Um, let's say... Um, Compression type is an enum, and we're just going to have it be one byte. And it's going to be, um, we're not ever going to have totally uncompressed, I think. We're going to have what we have now, which is um, constants, constant recognition, right? Maybe there's a better word than recognition. And uh, I don't know, um, we'll add some other ones later, right? But we want to put this into the format. So we'll put that uh, before any of this other data. So magic number version, put builder cast u8. Um, I mean, that sort of misaligns the data. Uh, but you know a different different compression type I don't know I don't know man it's fine data is gonna get misaligned soon enough actually we could we could reserve We'll make this zero, actually, <laughs> right? Um, let's reserve three bytes just to keep it aligned. OK. 
because you never know. You know, it's going to get misaligned eventually, but it's all good. Okay. Now what? Let's just make sure that compiles. And we'll run it. And next, I think we actually want to write the load function. Did we finish the UI framework stuff? I mean, we got it to a good point. It's going to be continually under construction for a long time. Oh, we're still printing all this stuff out, which we could probably stop doing. Um, but you know, you can tell it did it did all this work, which is great. Um, bone, whatever, flags, whatever. And okay, we believe this, we believe that there someday we might want it. And let's do that. Okay. So I can uncomment those if I want a little bit of printy print. Um, but in the meantime, let's write a load function. How big did the save function end up being? It's from line 860 to 1021, 160 lines. Okay. Load binary animation. Um, oh, we, we actually want to load this into an asset, right? Um, probably. Okay. So, well, you know, basically we want to do the same stuff we were doing here. Remember when we did the all light map data? So we do a file name, right? Oh, we have the full file name. Um, we can load this, uh, but ah, we'll change it later. Um, if we want to get this out of a package, we would call a different function here. And we have a function that says disk or package if a package is attached. But in this case, oh, we have, uh, hold on. Oh, shoot. Let's just be forward thinking. Okay, we have read entire file from disk or specific package, right? And I'm just going to make a new package that's null. And if the package is null, then we don't do any of this. And instead, we just do read entire file, which is what we're doing here. So we're going to do this. Uh, and the package is going to be the animation data package. We have a thing called animation package or package animation. I'm saying package in front. Um, maybe we should rename these at some point, but I'll let it stand for now. And that's just going to stay null because who cares? Now, um, so if from disk, we free it. Otherwise, the package stays resident until we would unload it, which for this package, it'll never get unloaded. It's the animation data. We want to animate things in this game. Okay. Now, uh, what do we do? Well, we say s is from, uh, file data, and we're going to use our get function and stuff. Oh, that's another thing we could do is provide those to the people. I'll put that on the list. Okay. So S is file data. Um, and now we're just going to modify it. You know, we do this thing where we parse stuff off and then advance the string. So, well, what do we want? We want magic and version um, are, and frame rate are U32 and um, 
a compression type. We can actually make that an enum. I think our get will do. I was casting it before. Um, okay, we could actually assert size of compression type is equal to one. Okay, so we're just going to get into the magic number. We're going to get into the version. We're going to get into the uh, um, compression type and we're gonna uh, advance s comma three skipped um, <clears throat> skipped reserved bytes that's fine and then get uh, frame rates and then number of bones and number of samples num bones num samples these are both s32 so first okay if magic is not equal to well, we want these things, right? If magic is not equal to animation file magic, why am I being all C here? Log error, um, invalid magic number in whatever wanted this, got this. <clears throat> uh, file name. Okay, and we just re return false. Yeah, let's let's tell people if we succeeded. That's fine. Um, if version is greater than animation file version, um, invalid version highest is whatever but got whatever right um, animation file version version okay so we don't like that uh, compression type we could also validate um, cast it to an int because by definition the enum will probably be out of range there um okay and then frame rate and all that we're not going to sanity check like this kind of basic sanity checking is like okay did you get the right file it, you know has it been overwritten with garbage or something after we check these it's like okay these are not hostile files right they're written by our own tools we just load them fast and use them fast. So like at some point we don't check anymore. This is just checking to save programmer time when basic stuff goes wrong. That's a different thing than like making your thing bulletproof to attack, for example, right? Any reason why you now write a structure for the headed and cast it from the raw data? I literally didn't do it that way this time. So I don't know what you mean. We did it the other way. We did it that way in the other thing. Um, here, I just didn't. And the reason is probably because there's not that much of a header here. Although I guess there kind of is now. 
we could have done that. We could have just made a header. Um, yeah, we could always switch to that. That's what we did with the other stream is we did it this way and then we switched to just doing a data structure. Who knows? Okay. Anyway, so let's just print out, we're going to assign these things, right? We're going to say result. We don't actually even save compression type. Let's put that on here. Result dot compression type equals compression type result dot num is equals num samples. Um, array reserve we're not actually going to resize the mm. yeah we're fine for uh one to num bones um And we're going to be incomplete. Read the data from the file. OK. So what do we have? Num bones, num samples, compression type, frame rate, uh, result.frame rate equals frame rate. And then the magic number and the version we don't need. Okay. Actually, let's just here, we're going to go print uh, result and just make sure that looks reasonable. Okay. Array reserve. Oh, yeah. Nodes is whatever. Node info. because the value on result is not an expandable array. So here we're going to say result.nodeInfo equals nodes. OK, array add. I did it. I did it again. Oh, you know what? If OK, never mind, because we'll just return false. We'll just return a false. Um, so we'll go here. Man. OK, not all control paths. OK, so if we get down here, we return true. That's great. Now, we're never calling this yet. So let's just call it on the same file right after we save. No check in. Uh, load binary animation. Okay, here. Dummy is a sampled animation. File name dummy. Okay. So now we should at least see if we got that right. Oh, we're also printing. Okay. These structs have all this asset base data that it's not our job to fill out. But here, number of samples, compression type, which is zero anyway, uh, frame rate 30, 30. Um, and all this other stuff that we're not doing yet. So like we're, we're fine so far. We didn't get an error about wrong magic number. These fields landed in the right place. So it is. Time to continue. Um, OK, so we've got our value flags. We've got, which I think we're going to actually want to store um, on 
the thing, because we're eventually going to want to um, use these during playback. Yeah, here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit of sloppy. Um, let's call these bone flags because they're per bone instead of value flags. Whoops, bone flag. Okay. Oh, no. Please, thank you. Okay, so we're going to put these out here. All right, we're going to put this here, and we're going to say cleanup leak. We aren't allocating this separately because it is just going to point into the animation data. Oh, no, you know what? Let's just do that. Let's just go straight to where we're going. Okay, never mind. We've got this array of bone flags, and um, we resize it uh, here. Oh, uh, right. Here's what we'll do, and then we'll say and bone flags equals bone flags, and we're going to say. Uh, Leak and um, oh, we don't care about this. This is just the ASCII loading code that it's going to go away completely eventually. Although this part that computes the bone flags will probably factor into something else. Um, yeah, okay. Let's just go. Oh no, it's temporary. What am I doing? It's temporary storage right there. Okay. So the bone flags are their money and we write them out. And so, yeah, let's just make sure that compiles. So when we read, when we read, um, let's just say what the things are. Um, okay. Uh, bone flags array per node uh, one byte count then name then zero um, I actually think I want to change the way these loops go Not yet, let's do this part. But like here we have the data split up in the file where like it's positions for each node or bone, right? And then positions for each uh, or orientations for each bone. Let's just change that name. Node is just such a generic name. Uh, okay. So I think I want all the data for one to be packed together. You know what? Screw it. Let's just do that. Like, it's actually less code, right? Um, Cause we don't need to keep getting the flags and whatever. Like it's literally that. So all the old files we wrote are now garbage, but it's, we're going to delete them all. We're not upgrading the version number cause we're going to delete them all anyway. 
uh, as we rapidly evolve the format here. Okay, so uh, per bone, per bone um, position array, orientation array, scale array. Okay. All right, let's do those flagrinos. We're gonna say, um, we're gonna have a bone flags, right? Which is an array of bone flags. Uh, bone flags dot data is just where we are in the string. Bone flags dot count is num bones and then Um, advance s by uh, num bones times size of bone flags. So we're just pointing at that data and then we're skipping past. Okay. Next, the nodes. We get, and here we get a little bit of error checking. Actually, no, we don't, because it's a byte, and it could be literally 0 to 255. Um, we could temporarily assert that none of them are more than like 100, right? That's a way of kind of making sure we didn't desync. Okay. For um, per bone, one byte count, then name of the bone, then uh, terminating zero, the name of the bone. Okay, so do we, I guess we save this, right? Um, we're going to say count <clears throat> uh, is u8 get count assert count is less than 100 no check-in this is a temporary sanity check we want you to be able to use the whole byte but for now we're just making sure we didn't get to a random byte okay now um, name is a string name dot count is count name dot data equals uh, s dot data advance s by count plus one oh assert s dot data hmm. assert s dot data sub count just s sub count is equal to zero because that should be the terminating zero on the name okay okay that gives us a name And then we're going to say we're going to reserve this. We're going to add to the nodes and then bone.name is copy string. Actually, no, just name. We don't copy the string. We don't do that. All right. Let's see how bad we messed that up. Whoops. Literally shaking right now. I am literally shaking right now. 
Oh God. I'm a little bit confused because it looks like we're printing out a really giant string. But our count should have been limited to 0 to 255. So I'm not sure how we do that. I'm not sure. Like we asserted here that it was less than 100. Oh, because I, oh God, I printed S and not name. Guys, I literally printed the rest of the file. So that was not, if you tell people that you're printing the name, you should print the name. Okay, we got it wrong. There we go. Um, why did we get it wrong? Probably this is already the wrong place. Probably our bone flags in harmony are out of harmony. What did I do wrong? Let's go back and check the thing. So we do our reserved byte. We, so we know frame rate is right and num bones and num samples seem right. Okay. Okay. So this is maybe, oh, we didn't get the G matrix guys. And by we, I mean me. I mean me, I got ahead of myself. I got ahead of myself. Watch, if I just advance, if I just advance by that, maybe that fixes the problem. We actually want to, whoops. We actually want to put that data, but let's just, hmm. Still wrong, still wrong. Why? So we might employ secret techniques here, okay? Oh, we also didn't do the parent indices, guys. Why, why do I like not look at the code? I just, my eyes skipped ahead. It even says the things. It's. It says, it says what the things are. And we could even print these indices.
Okay, so we got the count, we got the data, and then we advance. Um, um, by that. We were not Game Boy advancing enough. Okay, well, we didn't assert on anything. There we go. Okay, so we got our parent indices. Those look good. Look at that. We've got our names. They all came out of the file real good. Look at how many bones are for his cape there. Um, yeah, we're good. Okay, so what you saw there for a minute was the reason a lot of programmers are afraid of binary files, okay? Why? Because you get desynced on the data and then you're like, I have no idea what to do when I have garbage data and I'm scared, right? A, it's actually very simple. You just have to undo what you did in the save code. And if it's too hard to understand. Well, first actually look at the code like I didn't do. And then if it's too hard to understand, just go be careful, right? But secondly, I will show you the secret technique, okay? We obviously don't have to do this right now because it's working fine. But if it's not working, here is the secret technique, okay? You make some kind of a marker, like a 30... A, um, How many, yeah, let's say a 32-bit number. Um, like, uh, let's just say marker is uh, uh, U32 unsigned, and it's cafe, babe, right? Okay. This is a known value. And then wherever you want to make sure you're synced up, just store that in the thing. So like we sort of thought, oh, maybe up to here, uh, we're good. You can validate that by saying the following, uh, put builder marker, right? And then over here, if you want to make sure that you're synced up, um, you look after num samples and then you say uh, marker is a U32 and then you read that, right? And you make sure that's correct. And the thing is, you can keep doing that. So like, okay, so let's make sure that that's there. And then you take them out later once your file format works correctly, right? This is like the super secret. Okay, so, you know, we were fine. We said, uh, Marker is cafe, babe. So we found it in the file. If we didn't find it in the file, then we would know we desynced before this point, right? Somehow our reading code doesn't match our writing code before this point. And then what do you do? Well, you could put another one. You could say, okay, maybe after compression type, right? Well, let's do that, right? Or if you make it past that part, you could say, what if it's, uh, what if we, did we make it up until the bone flags, right? Um, now the thing here is I just have to, uh, I'm redeclaring my variable. <laughs> um, so let's not redeclare it, but you know, and you could even, you know, if you want this to be easily deletable, you just do this and you, you just copy pasta this, right? You go, bam, there's one after num samples. There's one after bone flags, right? Okay. And you can do that to binary search your code for the place. Oh, I messed one up. I messed one up. Uh, we asserted at 1110, right? Um, why is that? Because I put this one 
after this, but this is just the declaration of bone flags. This hasn't written it to the file yet. So I put this one before bone flags and this one after, and that's why it tripped, right? So if I actually put it to like, after we write the bone flags, right? Then we'll see. So guys, if you're making a file format, this is a very, very powerful technique because the way, you know, when programmers are not that effective, like most people, if they're programming most of the time would be pretty effective because it doesn't take that long to type lines of code, right? Like what makes programming slow is when you don't know what's going on and the code's not working and you don't understand why, right? So being a highly effective programmer, I think, is uh, all about reducing that, right? Reduce the number of times that you're confused and don't know what's going on and reduce the length of time that you're confused for the occasions in which that happened, right? Like people who watch this stream know that sometimes I get confused. On the part one of this stream, I was even confused because I thought, I was looking at output from the warrior animation and it was really the bird and I didn't understand what I was seeing until I realized that, right? So this is what makes programming take a long time and be confusing and scare people. And you just really want to, again, reduce the number of times you get confused and how long you get confused for. And well, how do you do that? Well, d there are many ways and they're nuanced and, and you build up your own personal style, right? I'm much better at these things than I was back in the 90s, for example, when I started doing professional game programming, professional in scare quotes, because nobody in the industry was very professional back then, oh my God. Um, but uh, this is one technique, right? It's like, and you might not think of it because you're like, wait, you're putting garbage into your file format. And it's, it's like, well, yeah, you put in these synchronizations and you could even like if def this so that you comment it out, but you could turn it back on later, right? If, if you are modifying your format and stuff. Useful technique. Okay. I'm saying goodbye to the cafe, babe, for now. Um, because we all know sometimes there's no cafe babe in your life. Sag. Um, I'm going to make some warm liquid. Does anyone have questions about what we just did so far? What's the useful technique? I literally just told you. It's putting the markers in. What if you didn't get that? I don't know what else to say. Watch, rewind, and watch. Uh, you saw that pic with me and Tim. I was not in that picture with Tim Sweeney. That was just an epic picture. I was not in that. Unless you're thinking of some other picture. I actually don't know if I've ever been. Like I've met Tim a number of times. I don't know if we ever have been in a picture together. First time I met Tim was probably 1998, 1999. I don't know. Some file formats keep the arbitrary markers into dynamically resync. Yeah, that's kind of a different thing though, right? That's that's like a situation. Okay, questions about what we did while the water warms up. Nobody has questions. All right, nobody ever cares what we do on this channel. 
Okay, so our parent indices are good. We got bone flags in harmony. We're printing out the result at the end. Okay, so we got all the names and we're probably gonna delete the names later, like I said, but for now we're doing it. Um, all right, so for, let's just say I, right? So we're gonna say flags is bone flag sub I. Are we actually, we're not actually setting. Right. Is it called bone flags? Yeah. All right. Just storing that for later use. So we get the flags. Um, we get. Well, um, bone. We get the bone and we're going to go to num samples. All right, cool. And now, um, we want to mirror this thing that we did about checking the flags, right? So remember this, no, not those, this one, this thing here that we did during writing, we want to do a similar thing during re reading. Okay. So, So if any of these flags are set, we want to assert, I don't actually no, cause this, this will assert. So we don't even need to do that. Let me get the T. train continues okay now uh, well <laughs> instead of appending we want to do a get right so um, and I'm just gonna make a thing called get struct for our own personal use right Okay. So this is just sort of the inverse of that. Um, So here, um, I maybe should have left the cafe babe in so we could verify at the bottom, but it's all good. 
um, we actually can also assert s dot count is equal to zero. We want to perfectly get to the end of the file. If we didn't do that, something is wrong. Um, and then our get struct, let's write that for a second. So get struct is a pointer to a string and um, um, assert s dot count is greater than or equal to size of t. Right, Cisco bytes. So we're asserting for now that the file is big enough. And then we're going to say, um, uh, well, mem copy pointer s dot data bytes and advance s by bytes. That is literally all. Nodes is not a member of sampled animation. Uh, yeah. Um, node info. Why was my naming convention so weird? I don't even know. I don't even know. Ah, oh, I got it wrong. You could even put like, you could put a cafe babe marker in the loop here, right? After every time. Um, I feel like I messed up something. Hmm. Why is, why are we having a cow? Array bounds check fail. I wait. We didn't allocate any nodes ever. What? Oh, cause um, we have this nodes array here, but we don't ever assign it until down here. So actually, let's not do that anyway. Let's just say nodes. Easy clap. Whoops. Um, no, not result dot nodes. Just nodes. Easy clap. Hey, look. This means everything succeeded including our assertion at the end that we used all the bytes oh boy that's a oh god okay we're outputting as the guy switches to new animations it's like scrolling the thing i guess we have a pretty big when we print arrays i guess we print big arrays by default i don't know um Anyway, we printed a whole animation right there. <laughs> That's great. Let's uh, let's do this. If we don't want to see those, um, this is just a list of things that we ignore from the hot loader. Okay, I deserve some chocolate from the cafe, babe. Okay, now the question is, are we putting the data correctly in the animation? Now, not all of it, because there's the whole footstep thing that I've been ignoring. But this part of it, maybe, maybe not. I may have forgotten to assign things to the struct. Let's double check, like the bone flags. Do we ever do that? Yeah, uh, the parent indices. Hmm. Whoops. 
So I think right now that's on the node. Yeah, so we actually want to set that. Um, okay. Now, I actually, I think I want to refactor this. Because like I said, I just want to be able to point to this information in the file. But the question is, do I want to do that right now? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I'm just going to delete that. And we're going to we're going to take whatever punishment comes from that. Uh, like we're going to compile and all sorts of things are not going to be happy. Let me um, take out that result printing for a bit because that was rather large and in charge. All right, so all this parent index is not known. That's going to happen in this file. It's going to happen in the files that use this data, the animation player. So we're going to have to change that and hope I don't make a disaster out of it. Parent indices, sub node index. I really should have checked in before this. Well, Well, rip. Okay, yeah, that's in a different file. Hold on. Um, wait. What? Are, I did this wrong. I think we just want to say parent index here, right? We assign there. It's the parent indices, and then we just do this, right? We're just walking up toward the parent multiplying transforms. Okay. Um, parent index, uh, index index um, I mean here let's comment this out this fine loop and instead we'll go put builder parent uh, Anim parent indices dot data xx anim uh, num nodes or num bones times um, oh append a, a print the sorcerer's appendage. Okay, parent index, bone dot parent index. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, where are we? Oh, yeah, this is the stuff we just did. So instead of assigning that there,
Okay. That appears to be it from this file. Oh, no, no, here, here. Okay, okay. Um, it's called anim here. Okay. Um, okay. Um, here, this part, we're just going to comment this out because we just don't want that string anymore. Okay, we have a lot more. Okay, this is... So now we go to the animation player. This is ending up, you know, we're changing some things. Um, just gonna let it tell me where the next one is. 325. No, wrong file. Sampled animation. Lots of information. Right type int. Yeah, it's S16 actually. Whoopsie. Um, I made it. Yeah. We're not going to have more than 32,000 bones in one mesh right now. Okay. Parent index. Yeah, because because I made it that. OK, and then this is trying to save to a string. Why? All right. Oh, my tea's been steeping. Let's pour it. I'm going to have some strong golden monkey with milk and honey. OK. So, we just changed that, and that just means we can point to an array in the file rather than having to reshuffle data around, and that is better for video games. We're still printing out the names. Why are we doing that? Let's not do it. Okay. The names are a little bit like we're expanding the count out to 8 bytes because that's our standard string format, but um, we're pointing the data into the file. Well, the next step is a little bit scary. Um, let me see if I can factor the footstep stuff out. Because what I would like to do is, so right now we load the text file, we save the binary file, we load the binary file. We don't use the binary file data in the game right now. I would like to throw that switch, but um, when we load the text file, we also do this footstep processing stuff um, that I added in long ago and that I don't remember at all what it does. 
um, like I don't understand if node left foot and node right foot, why are we doing this for every sample? I feel like we can put this in a separate loop because this is in this, uh, this sub array, which is, um, supplemental data. Wow. This is such old code. All right. Um, I suspect that this is only here. Oh no. Oh, this is if they're not relative. Oh gosh. Oh, this has all this stuff and oh my goodness. Okay. So the reason this is hairy is because we have some old animations maybe that aren't re-exported where this code does something. And if we move the footstep processing to after this code, um, it is badge. So this is making it confusing. Hold on, let me get my T totally staged here. Very strong. We're putting the New Zealand honey in there. Do you have before after measurements or is this just a node duh? This is just a node duh. We know how much, so we started by trying to make the animation data smaller, which is part of why we went to binary. But like, look, when you're in video games for a long time, you just know how to do things. And one of the ways you do things is you have a pre-packed file. And when you load that file at runtime, you just use the file data without doing a bunch of modern C++ style allocations and copies because allocations and copies are slow and you don't want to do them, right? And they're more code. They're complicated code that you don't want to deal with. Um, so yeah. Now, this I think I can move the footsteps to after here and delete this because part of the job of this is to convert to relative. So I'm going to move the footsteps and if they're broken, maybe we'll fix them in a separate session. Um, I don't even know if we need this data. This just seems, I think we're gonna to wanna to get rid of this at some point. Like that, when, when this code was switched from global to local, the meaning of this changed to be garbage. Yeah, literally nobody cares, okay. 
theta relative, we probably care. Um, but it's actually probably wrong. Except we're probably looking at it just in the hip bone or something. Um, Anyway, okay, so these are sort of two different supplemental data things. And since on relative animation files, they're both running on relative transforms anyway. Um, we're just gonna do some stuff here. I really should have checked in, by the way. So we're going to put the footsteps down here. And um, actually, we're going to want to factor this into a separate function in a bit. Um, but not yet. Hold on. Okay, this is commented out, so we're just going to trash it because it's just making things harder to understand. It's all good. Okay. Um, so now this is theta relative to start as well. And that doesn't use sup. All right. So I'm going to put that. We're going to put this back in the order in which it was and we're going to close that okay oops so this is computing various oh we don't need this get rid of that um okay We may rejigger that heavily. Um, I'm going to want to rename some of these functions and all this good stuff. Uh, but Yeah, let's let's call this then um, Where does the node left foot stuff come from? Node left foot Right, node left, yeah, nobody cares about that except that. What is x0? Uh, literally the first one. Okay. Um, pretty good. Uh, the supplement here. is goes here so now we're going to say um compute supplement on anim and what is that well it's uh this it's -a me mario okay so what did we get wrong there x zero 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Node root dot states zero. Well, that's all just inside here anyway. I mean, it's very silly how I'm doing that, but that's fine. All right, node root. Okay, let's see if we destroyed the universe. Do I think it's necessary to become a decent program to start very early in life? I don't think it's necessary. Like anything, if you start earlier, you get more practice in. And maybe, maybe sometimes it's easier to learn some stuff when you're younger. Like when people say you learn languages better when you're younger. I don't know. But I don't think, uh, I don't think it's necessary. Okay, our dude is doing things. That's great. We like it when our dude does things. Somehow a video game is all about a dude doing things. So it is what it is. All right. So we have factored that out. I don't really want to put that in the middle of this function. That's just a convenient thing about this language is you can do that to have minimal disruption while you're editing, but we're going to move it down there. Why are we going to move it down there? Because we can compute supplement on this thing. Um, here's what we're going to do. Back here where we do the load binary animation, we're going to say um, replacement is a new sampled animation. Oh, can't do that. Because the asset catalog wants to have a pointer to it. Um, but that's fine. You know what? We could just we could just load it right over the old thing. Don't we have a like a uh, How do we do this? Boy, I'm going to delete so much text file loading code. It's going to be great. I don't know, man. Um, Where's the animation catalog? It's in animation slash catalog. Okay, so this is the thing that kind of calls us here. This is obviously very old. Okay. Let's just do this. Good enough. Um, So we're going to do this stuff and reload that binary file.
and that really did a bad thing. So, um, invalid magic number. What? How did that happen? Because we're theoretically not actually loading these yet unless we immediately resave them. So we shouldn't have any, like, wait. Wait, keyframed animation doesn't have a magic number, dude. Oh, we're passing a different file name or something. Wait. Binary file name. See, I changed the code and found out. I done found out. Okay, we still don't have a dude. He is invisible. All right, Sag. Looks like we're really messing something up. So the node names are totally wrong. What did I what am I doing here? Um Oh, you know what I'm doing? I'm freeing the file data. We're not supposed to do that. Um, what I can do, I can leak it for now, and later I can just store it on the animation if we get it from disk. Like during development, we load it and free it and stuff, but um, from the package we don't. Yeah, so this, we will store that. Oh, no, sorry, that's not the right one. No, no, no. It's load binary animation. Uh, this part is hosing us. It might not be the only thing hosing us, but um, yeah, we don't actually want to do that because we're pointing into the animation data now. And before we were never using that, so it didn't matter. But now we are. Okay, we still don't have a guy. But the screen isn't full of errors. So now it might just be something basic like... I'm good at this game. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. Can't get over how fast it compiles. Rust has ruined you. Listen. Do not underestimate how much of your life you spend waiting for things to compile. It is a large amount. It is a large amount. I have found that a very fast compile edit debug cycle is critical to me being productive. Hard mode, yeah. Yeah, it's hard mode. Um, well, definitely what I could do, here's what I can do, is at the end of load, when we do load binary animation. So the reason, the reason I'm doing this is because um, the asset catalog supposedly, so <laughs> animation here is like a game resource. And the way that works is once you have a pointer to one, it's supposed to stay valid. So we can't like return a different one. We have to swap out the contents of that, right? Um, what I could do here is instead of this, I could say um, other is new sampled animation, right? And we can just look at the difference. Um, right? Uh, we can look at the difference and just see if we spot anything. That's step one. 
um, that's not set. So, and the other thing we can do is just go step through <laughs> when we're trying to animate the guy and see which array is empty or whatever the hell, right? Okay. Um, what, what file are we in? Sampled animation. Sampled animation. Okay. Look at all these no check-ins. So many of them. Wow, we might, oh geez, we might have to do a no check-in patrol. How do we, how do we have this many? What line are we at? 403. Go to, what? Dude, this program sucks. All right. Wait, why am I building the compiler? That is not, I'm in the totally wrong thing. I'm in the totally wrong thing. 403. There we go. Boom. Okay. Now, this is the wrong executable that we're debugging here. That's the exported one. We want this one. That's why it was working because it was the exported one. Now that probably got rid of our breakpoint, but we'll at least verify we have, wait, what? Why is he visible? Did I like not recompile correctly before? Oh, no, 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 he's of course visible because we didn't stomp the old data. Okay, good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Right, because I just literally changed that. Okay, fourth time's a charm. We're going to run here. Here we go. We're just going to look. Okay, this is the bird probably, right? I don't like the bird. Although it's smaller, but uh, file name. Warrior. Okay, never mind. We're good. We're good. Um... So we're going to look at uh, Visual Studio makes this kind of comparison very difficult because it's poop. Um, but we're going to look at anim versus other. Like there used to maybe be a way to pop up two windows next to each other. But now that's so much of a pain in the ass and hoses your configuration so bad that like I'm not even going to mess around with it because I might put my Visual Studio into a state from which I can't even recover it. So we're not going to do that. Let's just check all the top level arrays. Uh, bone flags, 9-3, 9-3, 9-3, 9-3, 9-3, 9 Supplement 6F, 6F, frame rate 1E. Events, nil, duration one, flag zero, user index zero. Oh, the G matrix, guys. I'm throwing away the G matrix. That's one of the no check-ins. Without that, you certainly cannot expect anything on the screen. Okay, let's get rid of some of these. So we have fewer of them because, oh my goodness. Um, no check in actually store that. Remember when I said I'm just going to skip it for now? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, get struct is, yeah, get struct s um, anim.g matrix.mat 4 by 3. not called anim is it result yeah okay that might not be our only problem but it certainly is a problem hey look well actually no we don't know if anything is fixed uh, because I mean, okay, let's, 
make it very uh, toggleable. Get rid of that because we're happy with that. Um, let's get rid of these. Whoops. Um, okay, so we have two no check-ins and they're both valid. Now, path strip extension, blah, blah, blah. Save binary animation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now, if stomp, if you saw stomp in New York City like I did, then we do one thing, else we do another thing. And stomping is going to be dinit anim. Right. Um, Hanim's already going to have supplement. I think. Let's see. No, it's not. Okay. Compute supplement anim. So we're just doing it into the thing versus into a different one. Is really all there is to it. Stomp was actually a pretty good show. You know, I ignored it for a long time because I was like, oh, everybody talks about this. And then I saw it and I was like, cool. Okay, we still don't have a dude. Sag. But we can just go look for more things. Um... Whoops. Okay. Um, let's go to there. So again, anim other. Samples, compression type, bone flame is a 6F, frame rate 1E, events, duration, nobody cares, flags, G matrix. Um, 0, 0, 0, 001, 0, 01, etc. 0, 0, what? Wait, it's. Okay, first of all, these components are in a weird order. But secondly, they're not the same. This is 0001. This is 0000. Like what? Excuse me? Now, the weird thing is, toward the end, it's the same. Zero, counting from the bottom. Zero, one. Zero, 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 one. So, two, one has one. Okay. And then three, two has a one. Okay, but 4-4 four, four does not have a... Oh, God! Of course it doesn't, because we don't save that. All right. All right, all right, all right. G matrix... Um... We didn't, we didn't engage in enough identity politics with that matrix is what's happening. See, we're only loading the top rows and it initializes to zero 
not identity. We could actually just set the 4-4. There we go. We have a dude. Wait, because I turned it off again, right? Or no? Stomp. Stomp is not true. Okay, let's make it true. I don't actually want to do this. Let's just set the 4-4. Screw it. Screw it. Stomp is true. Let's see if we have a dude yet when we stomp. I gave it 50-50. That will have something on the screen that doesn't look exactly right still. Dang it! Wait, oh, did you see that? He flashed for a second. Oh, I told you we'd have something. Come on. Come on, where is he? Now he's not flashing, but he was... There was something... There, see? Sometimes you get a little glimpse... Just, just a little. It's like when you're trying to do an OpenGL program and one out of every 20 seconds that your triangle flickers on the screen for one frame. And you're like, why? Why? It's like he's being scaled weirdly or something, isn't he? Like randomly, like uninitializedly in some way. has turned into a debugging session and debugging is where productivity goes out the window unless you can do it fast um, I don't know what data is wrong it is unlikely to be any of this top level data it is quite possible okay my best guess of something that's wrong is like that there's other stuff that happens in the text load that we are now, that need to happen that we are now not doing, right? Um, like maybe we save before doing some stuff. Oh, but then we should just fall through and do it anyway here. Oh, guys, remember what I said? Okay, this is where we get so deep into what we're doing that we forget. Remember when I said at the beginning of the stream, or maybe last stream, look, when these things are constant, we're just going to blast them across the whole array because the animation player doesn't know how to play back constants. Right? It needs the whole array filled, so we're not going to save that memory in RAM. We're going to save it on disk. Remember, I said all these things. We have video evidence of me saying all these things. Guess what I did not do? Look at this. We just set the translation of sample zero. There's like 76 other samples that are all going to be set to zero, especially for the scale. Guess what? If you're interpolating, you're only going to see the guy for a little bit between sample zero and one. That's what we're seeing. That is what we are seeing in the animation. We only get to see the guy when we're between sample zero and one.
Yes. Yes. Do you do you get it? So we need to do this. We need to blast across the galaxy. Okay, do you do you get what I'm saying here? All right. Now, um Whoops, it's not orientation, it's quaternion. Blast it would make a good language keyword. You don't know what it would do. It would do blast processing on the Sega Saturn. Hey, look everybody, we have a dude again. Let's verify that stomp is true, I believe it is. All right, so we're loading the binary data and we're animating off of the binary data. How good is that? It's pretty good. Now the question is, so we're loading the text data, we're saving, we're loading the binary data, and then we're supposedly stomping our data with the binary data. There might be little other nuggets of something that we're not quite doing. So the next step is to do the thing where we look for a binary file and if it exists, we load that inside of the text file. But before we even do that, we need to delete all the anim files because we have some that are old, that are in the previous format with the same version number. It's a disaster. So we need to terminate all anim files with extreme prejudice. Um, maybe, maybe this actually works. I hit delete. This Windows awful does it do it delete cannot find this item okay it just doesn't update this okay we somehow didn't get them all delete okay and then we do this again f5 like what 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 even is going on whoops what what do they think they're doing when they work on this operating system and i use that term loosely okay so i think we got them all classic windows no classic windows was way better than this in classic windows i could search for files and delete them and i would get responses that told me that this task had been done at some point they broke that Okay. It is unreasonable for me to expect a file browser to show all the files. False. <laughs> False. Dude, this entire game engine runs off browsing trees of hundreds of thousands of files when you start up and doing it in less than a fraction of a second. Well, a fr fraction is small. If you think it's that slow to show those files, you have never done it and you don't know what you're talking about. There are lots of files, to be fair. Um, in this folder, there's like a couple hundred thousand files. It doesn't take that long to walk a couple hundred thousand files in Windows. It simply doesn't. Try it. Pretty sure he was being sarcastic. Well, maybe. Maybe. 
I just, I encounter enough people saying that kind of thing seriously that like, you know. Okay, my sodi's flat. My sodi pop is flat. Um, this is a good time for a couple minute refresher where I get up, I maybe make some more tea. Um, the next step is going to be, like I said, we, we did this in uh, the light map stream that was like not really an official stream, but where we check two file extensions and like get, get the one that we like, right? Um, So we will put that in and maybe we could even start putting that in and just say like, oh, I see the binary version, but we're not even going to use it yet. Right. And then we'll switch over to using it and all that stuff. Okay. Questions about any of what we just did before we move on. Questions. Questions. We'll put a no check in on stomp here because we don't want to check this in. No questions. Nobody ever has questions. Nobody cares. Nobody ever wants to do animation. While the tea is heating up, could you use a meta program to ensure compatibility between file format versions changes? Um, mm, I feel like you might have to make some kind of like templated way of doing it. Cause like analyzing general code that could do anything is not easy. So you would, you would need to conform to some structure to maintain those invariants in some way. I don't know. It's not something that I have thought about. There might be a way to do it. That's good. There might be a way to do it that has good intentions, but makes a giant mess. You know what I'm saying? What do I use no check in for? It's to prevent me from checking in that code. The source control system will reject it. What might be the trade-off for having many small files versus fewer larger ones? Um, that's not really a thing. Like right now, every file is an individual animation that the game plays. And that's controllable by the animator. He can export one animation at a time. Um, whether he would want to animate big groups or export big groups at a time, I don't know. It seems confusing. You would have to make sure one animation wasn't in multiple files. It's just, you know, I don't think that's a thing that we want to do, especially because the packaging at the end will put all of these animations into one file anyway. So having an intermediate storage with multiple, it just doesn't sound right. Let me get that tea water. Okay. 
So now the question is, where do we do this thing where we look for both files? If we go back to the catalog that we were in a, a bit ago, right? So here we say reload asset and see it kind of knows the full path. This is a little bit of a weird case. This is a little bit of a weird case. Like, I'm going to do this in kind of an ad hoc way that I don't love, but it's fine because um, in the long term, we're not going to be doing this here anyway, right? In the long term, these text files are donezo. Donezo! Donezo. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say without is path strip extension and m dot full path. And we're going to say uh, binary is t print whatever dot anim uh, without. All right. So we're taking off the extension and we're putting dot anim on. And we're going to say um, get mod time and size, right? Whatever. What, 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 what did we call it? Mod time and file mod time and size. Yeah. So uh, mod time size success is file mod time and size of binary. If success, uh, let's call it binary exists. If binary exists, we get the mod time of the, um, say binary mod time, binary size, text mod time, text size, text exists is file mod time and size and m dot full path, which is always going to be the text version right now, which again, I don't love. Actually, we could have, See, because I want to be able to run packaged. Let's do this. Does path strip extension does it also return the extension? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but We probably should. Anyway, for now, I'm not going to do it. OK, so extension is uh, path extension anim full path, right? If extension is equal to uh, keyframed animation, right? Then we do all this stuff. If we end up here later with the binary format, when we're running packaged, we won't do any of this, which is good. OK, if the extension is keyframed animation, we strip it, we put an anim on there. Is that if that exists, we see if this exists. OK, um, if text exists, um, well, if there's no text, right, which is weird, um, if there's no text, that should really be an error. Uh, I don't know if we ever search for it. Mm, let's just do this. Let's just say in the case where they both exist, because we'll fall back to normal handling otherwise. Um, then if binary mod time is greater than or equal to text mod time, log cowabunga, 
we can use the newer, the binary animation for whatever. Okay. And we're not actually going to do it yet. We're just going to detect this, right? Dang. Animation names was not able to find. How did I break all these things? What is happening? What did I do? I didn't do anything. It's not my fault. How are the animation graphs messed up? Like what's even happening right now? Dude, this is nutty. What? What is going on? Get Excel time. The guy doesn't exist. Are we like totally trashing the universe? Did we get a cowabunga? I don't even see a cowabunga. Hold on. What even is ha when you see something like that? It's like okay, I don't, I don't know what is happening. Okay, we're still dying. What did I just do? By the way, I've said I should check in like seven times, and I never did. Okay, hold on. What did I do last? In sampled animation, I changed some things. I changed stomp. Maybe, maybe stomp is doing bad things. No, like what? What? I deleted the anim files. Ah, yes. Okay. They should not be necessary. That is a good point, though. I did delete the anim files. Um, I have no idea what that has to do with these other catalogs not being able to. F oh, did we accidentally delete like other files? Like did Windows delete a bunch of crap that has nothing to do with anything? I bet that's what happened. Let's see. We'll also pull down whatever other changes. That's got to be the explanation. All right. Well, people have been editing the game as well. So we could look through here to see, of course, now maybe I pulled down other changes that'll break things, but um, see restored. So somehow we deleted, oh, it showed me anim star for some reason. Maybe when you say dot anim, see, I deleted all the animation graphs because they start with the word anim guys. That is literally what happened. We should do a hard exit when those happen. All right. So we're not going to turn stomp back on because we don't want to stomp anymore, I don't think. Um, stomping was a test. So now we're doing cowabunga oriented programming. Cowabunga! We can use the binary animation for this. We can use the binary animation for ambient bird. Now, I want to go to warrior active idle 01.keyframed animation. I'm going to make it newer, right? 
So we do not want to see a cowabunga for this next time. If we see one for the birds, screw that. Who cares, right? But we're going to run again. I don't want to see that cowabunga. Okay, we got one for the bird. We did not get one for the dude. Okay, but now it should have rewritten a new binary. So if I run it again, we'll get it for the bird and the dude. Yeah, there's the dude, there's the bird. We got to cut down on these errors though, man. And that one, the dude was here. The dude is not there. The dude abides. Okay. So, Cowabunga oriented programming has succeeded for us. Now, um, in this case, we will say load binary animation, right? Now again, there's the possibility that uh, we're gonna be missing something, right? And uh, this is gonna be anim and So we will get to delete this eventually. Um, so this is not other, this is anim. And um, what do we do down here? Failure to load binary animation file, whatever, binary, return false. This is return true, except we don't, we don't do these. I'm getting hungry again, gosh. Binary file name. Oh, did I delete the cowabunga? I should have left it in. We can put it in a new place where we actually load. Okay, see, he's animating too fast. It's because we didn't set the duration. Like, I forgot to move that part. Because that's not saved in the file, but the system uses it. See, he's kind of shimmying. All right, let's fix that. So the duration stuff is down here. Um, let's just put all that in supplement. Does that compile? Yeah, okay. So, and let's put the cowabunga back here. Log cowabunga. Do we plan to use the witness engine for another project? We were going to, uh, oh boy. Well, I gotta pour the tea, I'll tell you that. We were going to and we were trying to, but it was way too many projects. Even what we're doing right now is too many projects. So um, 
probably the witness engine as such will not be used. The, the parts of it that live on by moving into this uh, will be used, you know. Check it out, brah. Now the other thing we can do is when we build the manifest, we can actually make sure all those animations are loaded so that we have the binary files, right? And then we can do the packaging. Okay, I wasn't quite planning on doing this in this stream, but we could totally do this now and then check it all in, right? So, um, like I think we're probably okay. Like there's a chance that I messed up the footstep matching, but we can diagnose that. Look at all the cowabungas though. It's so good to have cowabungas in life. It's almost as good to have chocolate hearts that the cafe babe brought you. Mm. Okay. Get rid of the cowabunga now. Actually, let's go back here for a second. We have some no check-ins still. Okay, all this stuff. Um, I feel like we should move this out to here because it's sort of a better place for it. Okay. So we just don't do the stomp though. Right now in the package program. Oh wait, hold on. Are we more no check-ins? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This part. We don't want to leak this because these could be big if you are working for a long time. So we're gonna say um uh anim or result dot development file to free uh equals file data. Um if a uh, free result development file to free. All right. Uh, also, when we dnit, we'll go, we'll do this. We'll set it to null just for kicks. Um, cool. Oh, it's a string. That's fine. This is called anim here. File name. Um, anim dot full path. Great. Okay, now we're going to just get ahead of ourselves here. So in the package thing, um, we're going to say that we are packaging. Um, we're not packaging keyframed animation. We are packaging um, anim. Now we're not going to actually put these into a package yet. I want to check in while we're still running these with loose files, but I do want to be able to make an exported build with these with loose files. And I think it will cut down 
um, the size of all our things. Now the problem is, let's get the game uh, to run all these into binary. The question is, how do we do that? Um, I could just search through the file tree and find every single... Yeah, like a thing that we could do later is um, try to introspect on our animation graphs and figure out which animations play or maybe our animation names file. For now, we're going to be super lazy and just put in all the animations in the game. So we're going to go to our manifest. Um, we're going to say at the end here, for every animation, Make sure a dot anim file is generated just by looking it up in the longer term. Do something to pick only the things we want. Okay. Um, anim visit is. Um, I always forget info is a file visit info and uh, what do we want to return just just the files string pointer to that right and we'll do something and we'll go visit files data art maybe Let's just like uh, sampled animation. Where do those live? Because if we can skip some of the assets, it'll just make it faster. Oh, keyframed, keyframed animation. Okay, um, these are all, in, oh, it doesn't tell me that, oh yeah, it does. Data, art, animation, if they're all in the animation folder. We'll just use that to constrain the search. And if that causes us to miss things, then I'm sad. All right, so data, art, animation, right? Um, and uh, true and um, uh, animation files, animation assets, is an array of string and that's going to use temporary allocator and we do this in animation assets and anim visit all right anim visit is going to go um hold on um path decomp our friend path decomp um path base name extension is path decomp info dot full name. All right. Um, if extension is equal to um, hmm. I kind of want to lowercase this to be paranoid, right? Actually, no, because we don't, we reject file names if they have case problems. So keyframed animation, um, 
array add results base name. All right. Actually, we don't even need to do this. Um, We don't even need to do this because we just say um, find animation catalog base name. Uh, look, look this sucker up. Okay, so after we frickin' run that, um, we should have a lot of stuff. Now, let's. Cowabunga this um, just so we can see. And we're going to do the whole manifest packet process again, right? This is going to take a little bit of time, especially it's a debug build that we made, so take even more. A couple minutes, maybe. Of course, I put that part at the end, so GG's. Could have put it at the beginning. Da! What did I do? All light map data for manager a whiz out of water. Okay, this is one of, because we updated the levels, all right? And this is new. Okay, this is important because this is a crash that other people on the team could have. Um, I should have returned from here, um, and I didn't. Uh, this should just be a return false because we don't have an entity. Okay. That has nothing to do with, I, well, okay, actually, it is vaguely related to the work we're doing now. Um, good thing I ran the whole manifest process. Um, in that it's a different instance of packaging together more files into fewer files, but it's like a different one that has to do with lighting. We did that on a different stream the other day. And, uh, you know, we haven't tested all the error cases. That's not really an error case. It's just old. Um, so what happens? Let's make sure when we return false from load all light map data. Okay, here we just can't fail. That's the packaged option. Um, if all is newest, okay, we need to check that. That's very, dude, sometimes, I think I'm a careful programmer sometimes and then I do crap like this. So we wanna fall through, otherwise fall through and recompute. We can fail if entity IDs in the level change, which happens all the time. Which means we don't want to log an error, actually. There are cases here that are in an error. We will rebuild. That is not an error. Um, we probably should invalidate that more with like a global stamp or something. Global tramp stamp. Look at all these cowabungas. We are having a good time today. We're going to have 2,700 cowabungas.
yeah, it's unclear how many of these animations we are currently using. The animator was going to look at that this week, and we might uh, we might trim some down. Okay, we got a manifest out of it, and we supposedly. How do I say star dot anim with nothing after, right? Is there even a way to do that in Windows? Two thousand six hundred and sixty items we just done converted. Now, actually, here's a thing that we can do. We can see what the total size is of all the files, right? So run tree data animation or art animation. Um, let's go star dot keyframed animation, right? And we'll select all and properties these. And that's going to take like 27 minutes to come up. Okay, it's two gigabytes, guys. Two gigabytes, 2.24. All right, what about star dot anim? Um, is this really only dot anim files? I don't remember where the other ones were. All right, 2663. Eight hundred megabytes, so it's like one third the size, and we haven't even done animation compression yet. So GGs. All right. Um, now, we've got a new manifest that probably isn't that different from the old one, but we'll just get it. We go here. This manifest is like all the files that we're supposedly packing up. It's a little bit in, informal and not used for everything because this packaging process is new. All right. Um, I don't remember the last time I changed the packager, so we'll just compile it again and we'll run it. It is much faster now that we got the number of files down, and it'll be even faster once we put these binary files into a package. But I don't want to do that yet. Oh, maybe we'll do it at the I want to check in before I do that, and then we'll do that. Boom. Okay. So we have 7,000 files and packages. We have 10,000 loose. Um, of those 10,000 loose, 2,600 are in anims. So that's a quarter of them. And since those are a mere 800 megs instead of two gigs we could actually pack them together and that's probably okay for development okay um, and we can go look here. Okay, see, this was, I think, was it 11.2 last time we looked? It's down to 9.5. We're under 10, guys. Our Weisman score, I should have been keeping a Weisman score about distribution size. So we're at 9.57. This one is 14. So we are at 9.5 out of 14. Don't you wish the Call of Duty developers did this? Okay. Well, actually, they do. They just don't do it as well as they should. Um, that is great. Uh, I think I'm going to check all this stuff in. Well, actually, do I need, did I change? Oh, I did, because we added some String Builder stuff. Add uh, some minor stuff to String Builder. What did I do in Simple Package? Oh, yeah, I added that reserved 
boom. Oh, change log is after. People have been working on the compiler. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, bindings generator. Bindings generator, good action. I was maybe going to use bindings generator for something scary soon. So it's good. We might have to deliver value to the people tonight. You know what I'm saying? Value might have to happen. Anyway, so we go to the game and we say a bunch of stuff about a binary animation format and packaging that. Boom, ba boom, boom, boom. Oh shoot, I accidentally checked in this level that I didn't want to check in, but that's fine. Oh, no check in on manifest. Okay, well, that means I didn't check in the level. Um, oh, the cowabunga. All right, that's good. Um, Let's not do this level for now. I don't know why it modified these files. Like whatever, okay, anyway. Very good. Not very good. I don't know why we modified all these files, but okay. Those code changes are checked in. They are safe. Now, um, let's try packaging. Okay, when we build a package, first let's do that. Let's go to here. And we'll say we have a new package, package animation data, we called it in the other program. And package animation data, animation data, and actually let's copy this one, package animation data. Now, now uh, we need to put the things in. This is getting very messy. Um, We could factor this into put file into package for now, except, uh, yeah, let's do that for a second. Um, and then, so that other animation package is just for this stuff. And maybe we should just all put it into the same package optimistically. Let's do that. And if we want to break it out later, okay. If we want to break it out later, we can. Getting rid of that. Okay, so, so then I don't have to clean this up anymore yet. We'll clean it up later. It's just not relevant. Um, anim. So if we see any of these things, we put it into package animation. All right. I'm gonna rebuild this. Now, here we had Anim was in second place for number of files, uh, and our files kept looser 10,000, and we now want a much better result than that. Uh-oh, did I keep the folder open? No, I guess not. Do I feel more productive in the morning or evenings? It depends. Um, I often can be pretty good in the mornings. 
So lately I've been getting up and streaming. There we go. Files kept loose 7,459. A week ago at this time, approximately, we had files kept loose 270,000. <laughs> so 40x. We have improved it by 40x approximately. We also got the size down. Okay. It's not even in this top list. In fact, it's not in the list. There's no loose anim files. We had 2663. Two, now, I kind of don't understand why we had 27 something and now we only have 2663. That scares me a little bit, except maybe we had duplicate file names. That's the only thing I can guess. I don't know, man. Anyway, we'll, if it's a problem, we'll figure it out. I just don't want to look into it yet because, the, like I said, the animator was maybe going to go call a bunch of animation files and review that anyway. Um, so this is great. Uh, maybe the size went down. I, I don't know how Windows counts size there. Let's just check. I doubt it went down by much. It was 9.5 something. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. And, um, well... We don't load this yet if we're packaged. So let's go to the program. So animation data is not a thing. All right. Um, so who used that? Oh, uh, actually, also, um, when we... When we init stuff, okay, so here we mount the animation package, which is just a way to say like, hey, it's active. Um, we do stuff to the catalogs somewhere. Animation catalog, okay. So, here we add it to the hot loader stuff, but we only want to do that if we're not hot loading, right? Here we say, sorry, we'll just bind to package animation catalog. Um, that way it'll only get files out of that package. Now somewhere we referred to animation data catalog. Yeah, or yeah, package. And that was there where we say load bind, hmm. This is a little weird because it's redundant. Um, it's fine, we could pass the package Not going to worry about that yet. Um, the reason it's weird is because the catalog calls this, and the catalog has a specific package attached to it. I don't know. We'll work that out. This is it's a new thing. Okay. Um, let me think about this. So theoretically... Okay, firstly, let's make sure that we don't die if I just run in development mode, that we didn't change anything critical. So here we should still be loading the individual binary anims off disk, etc. Okay, now, um, we'll copy that binary, whoops, to the export. that we just made that has the package, right? So here we have uh, animation.package and it's 800 megs. So you know it's got all the animation data. And now we're gonna paste in this debug executable. It's very pasty. 
And we're going to run, and we're going to see if we have animations. We might not. 50-50 odds. We do not have... Oh, no, we... No, we don't have animations. Okay. I goofed. Um, oh, because... Okay, there... Yeah. Because um, we didn't add the extension. Okay. When we bind a package to a catalog, we do this. Okay. Um, we do this. Bind a package. We go over all the entries in the package and see if the catalog supports that extension. We never told this catalog about the dot anim extension. And we only want to do that if we're running packaged because otherwise it'll like not prioritize the text one correctly. It's fine because we'll get rid of the text one eventually. But um, animation uh, catalog right um extensions and then let's make sure that when we init this is after we have startup variables yeah it, it is i think um so I don't know why this extension is here. That doesn't seem right to me based on how things are being handled, but Okay. When I was looking for animation stuff, I was looking in modules. I don't even remember what that was. Hey, look, wait, that's not, that's development mode. Okay, hold on, hold on. I knew it was too good to be true. Let's get our binary back 540 PM. This one is 537 PM. We are now updating it to 540 PM. We are running it 50, 50. 60% of the time, it works every time. Dang it. Um, it's weird that we don't see anything. Unable to load animation file, data art animation, overworld queen animation. Okay, so we could actually look in the manifest and see if that's there, right? Either it is or it isn't. And that tells us some stuff about where the bug is. Um, not in the manifest, in the in the package. Um, Animation.package, right? Even though this is a binary file, it's got strings in it. Don't forget that. Binary files have strings in them. So, uh, Animation over world queen. Oh, Emacs is being slow. It's just completely locked up on me right now. Fuck this program, dude. Overworld queen animation queen active idle one dot anim. It's right there. It is right there. Um, so Unable to load animation file. That sounds like a text file thing. Yeah. This, this is a text file loading, so we went to the wrong place here. Um, so reload asset. Oh. Yeah, we never, we never load 
any kind of binary. <laughs> um, so this whole path is going to get deleted, like I was saying, right? So, okay, here's what we do. Else, if extension is anim, which is our new thing, um, we are running packaged, just load it. All right. Um, boom. And this looks like messy and a lot of stuff, but all of this is going to go away. So I'm not, I'm not sweating it. Binary. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just copying it, dude. I literally don't care because we're going to delete it. So now we're running in development mode again. This is not packaged. I just want to make sure that I didn't do anything wrong. Probably didn't because this is an if statement that comes after it. Okay, so that's great. Now the question is, can we get that happening in the playtest mode? Here we go, 5.44 p.m. Just think about how much our iteration would slow down if we had to wait three minutes per compile or whatever some of these languages take for 200,000 line projects. Be terrible. Hey, we got a lady. It's kind of slow, but that's because I built the x64 output. We can we can do a release build as well. Look at that. We're running packaged everybody with the animations. Check it out. Snake bird. Elements of game design. All right, well, GG's. Like, that's more than I thought maybe we would get done today. And we've done two streams. And uh, it's good, so... Yeah, I didn't expect to get all that done today. Um, but we got it, so that's great. Um, let's just make a release build and Benny test it. Um, just because it's a little bit of responsibility, right? Um, anyone have questions about this? About all the things we did today? Celebration tea? I've had so much tea today. I'm having a celebration Waterloo grape black cherry. So I think that the next step, I don't know if I'm going to do this tonight. We'll see. I'll take a break for a bit. The next step stream will be trying to run more from the data in the package, right? Um, like I said, we're blowing this up in memory after as we load each animation because, for example, those constants get expanded to a whole array, and that is no bueno. So the next step would be to get our animation playback to look at those flags that we added and to do some good stuff there. You missed most of today. Well, there are videos that you'll be able to watch because computers and the future. Questions, though. We're not going to do the soundtrack to the test because we don't want to get striked on our channel. Sad. 
sad, sad. So this test is running in development mode. This is not with that package we just built, but my main priority is to make sure that I didn't somehow disrupt development for the rest of the team, right? If we can run this to the end and nothing bad happens, then maybe I didn't disrupt development for the rest of the team. It's always dicey when you're making changes this big, right? Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel great. Dude, when I use this programming language, it's so easy to do stuff. I don't even, I mean, not to, you know, advertise, but like, I, it's, I like it so much more than C++. Oh my God. Oh my God. So much more. So there's no questions. Nobody cares about all the great animation stuff we did today. Very sad. How are you going to succeed in the game industry if you don't care about all the great animation stuff we did? Truly your biggest slowdown with development is waiting for builds. Yeah, well, somebody should send a message to the people who wrote whatever compiler you're using that your computer is a frickin' supercomputer that's astonishingly fast. Just send them that note, please, because they don't seem to understand this factor, fact, factorio. Factorio. All right, since nobody has intelligent, wonderful questions, um, I'm just gonna end the YouTube stream here because that's recording. And then we'll just hang out and chat until this is done. Thank you people watching on YouTube for hanging out. We'll do a part three at least probably, M maybe more after that. So part three would be like um, at least the memory thing and maybe doing more rearranging of, of what's in the structure. Uh, and then part four might be peeking into animation compression a little bit and seeing what we can do there. Actually, though, mm, before we do that, no. So part three might be using the memory better. Part four is probably, and we may not put this on YouTube because it's going to be gnarly and gross, uh, rewriting the exporter. Because A, the old exporters in C++, sad. And B, um, it exports text files. And we want to change it over to export these. And honestly, I would rather have it in this programming language because I enjoy it so much more. Now, last time I did this, I actually did it on stream. And I was starting to do bindings for Maya. And it was super gross. But uh, Raphael has been doing a lot of work on the bindings generator. And it would be a good test of it to see if we can do Maya bindings. Um, Maybe we can't, in which case I would maybe give that, hand that off to him and say, can we figure this out and then continue with the C++ version and make it do binary, which is a little bit annoying, but not that bad. Um, I just don't. So firstly, I don't want to work in C++ anymore. Secondly, it's good to not have the tool chain of this game be in multiple languages if possible, right? Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming by, YouTube people, and uh, stay tuned for part three.